I'm Sean Morse Jones and in this video we'll be looking at why it can be useful to put a value on nature's services. In lesson one you learnt that nature provides a huge array of ecosystem services vital to human survival. Value nature is about demonstrating the importance of these services to human well-being, business and the economy so that nature's values can be better factored into decisions. In essence, it's about making nature's values more visible to decision makers. All too often, the value of ecosystems and the services they provide are not recognised nor included in the cost of the products we derive from them. Ecosystem services are actually worth a huge amount of money and also they provide a vast array of health and social benefits. But we tend to only realise these when we lose them. For example, the price of the shrimp in the supermarket rarely includes the cost of the mangrove that were cleared to make way for the shrimp farm. Clearing mangroves can reduce a natural flood defence, leading to extra damage to homes and livelihoods when storms occur, like the Indian Ocean tsunami. Studies have found that losing just one square kilometre of mangroves in Thailand can increase storm damages by as much as half a million dollars per square kilometre. Nature provides many services free of charge to support production too. Most of our important food crops are dependent upon animal pollination. In Costa Rica, natural forest-based pollinators have been found to increase coffee yields by as much as 20% and improve quality, leading to direct financial benefits to farmers. In the UK economy, Pollination services provided by bees and insects are estimated to be worth over £400 million a year. Nature holds substantial values to people, socially and culturally too, and these values can be hugely influential. For example, there have been instances in India and Australia where the strong cultural and spiritual values local communities hold for their sacred nature sites have been so great that they have been protected despite the potential for huge economic benefits from mining. So why would we value nature? Despite wide acknowledgement that it's important, it is regularly overlooked and undervalued in decisions. Consequently, many ecosystems and the services they provide have been lost or degraded, threatening their capacity to sustain us in the long run. And demands for ecosystem services are set to increase with growing populations and increasing consumption levels. Balancing our development goals with the need to protect the environment requires difficult decisions. By putting values on these services, we can weigh up the true costs and benefits of different courses of action, including who benefits and who loses, now and in the future, to enable more sustainable and equitable choices. The money has the advantage of being comparable across services, and it's also often a familiar metric, making it incredibly useful for communicating to a wide audience and to gain traction with business and policy makers. It can also be a really powerful communication tool to raise awareness and interest in the incredible value of nature. A 1997 study put a value on global ecosystem services at around $33 trillion per year, far higher than global gross domestic product. And the figures have been more recently updated to $125 trillion per year. These studies have been hugely successful in increasing awareness of nature's values. But money cannot capture everything. For example, there are many cultural services like spiritual values that cannot be easily translated into monetary terms. So we need to remember that most economic valuations are conservative. Of course, not everyone agrees with the idea of putting a value on nature. Many believe nature has value in its own right and should be conserved regardless of its value to anyone or anything else. These are important and valid views. However, this intrinsic value of nature is essentially beyond measure. But we can measure its extrinsic values, or in other words, its contribution to human well-being, as a complementary way to help make the case for conservation. Even so, valuation can be challenging. Ecosystems and their processes are complex, and it can be difficult to place a value on their services. And there can be risks in using valuation for conservation purposes. For example, when comparing the benefits and costs of conserving a pristine but remote forest versus clearing it to extract a lucrative, high-value asset like oil or coal, an economic valuation approach alone may not be sufficient to support a conservation outcome, and instead other decision rules may need to be applied, like the precautionary principle. Concerns have been expressed that valuing nature will lead to its commodification, 
putting it at risk of market forces. However, placing a value on nature is not the same as putting a price on it. Valuation simply provides an estimate of the benefits nature provides to society. There are lots of ways this information can be used in decisions and interventions, some market-based and some not. Importantly, where decisions need to be made about how we use nature, valuation is inevitable. So by doing this in an explicit and transparent way, the hope is that we can avoid nature being inadvertently given a zero value. Now, join the forum to tell us what you think about valuing nature. And in the next module, you'll learn more about how people are a vital part of conservation.